Hi, I'm Andy, and I want to thank Molly for asking me to participate in this conference. I'm coming to you from Portland, Oregon. I was diagnosed with Asperger's at age 44, and I'm now 48. I have done medical transcription and or text editing, which is a new thing the last few years with the advent of speech recognition systems, on and off since 1989. I work remotely for a national service, and I'm here in my house, which is also my office. And so here's my 30 second commute. Here we have the space heater. I can't stand to be cold, and I get cold so easily. And here's the light box. Very important if you live in the Northwest. And some of my obsessions books. Tom Seaver of the Mets. I'm a Mets obsessive, even though I haven't lived in New York in over 20 years. Now we got the kitties here, the crazy cat lady, since that's basically what I am, sort of. Flowers and Mets colors that I crocheted myself. Puss in Boots, my great American novel. Now we get to my actual workstation. Here's my chair. It's really important that I have a chair that's comfortable for my back, so I'm really glad I got to pick out my own. And there's a nice little pile of fuzzy things to pet. Kitties. I like kitties, in case you didn't notice. My monitor. Flat screen. Keeps me from getting headaches. You know, a little squeezy toy here. Some lotion for my perpetually dry hands. Silly putty. Always a classic stim toy. And this might be my very favorite thing on my entire desk. It's a stand-up, right-on, wipe-off board. Kind of an easel style. I think of things, I write them down. And when I don't need them anymore, I just erase them. And it's right there in my face. Perfect. And this is Zevon, my office assistant. Always sleeping on the job. Now, my workspace is not completely enclosed. I do share it with the dining room. And once in a while, the mess will start to metastasize, and either I will get sick of it and clean it up, or my partner will nudge me and ask me if it might be possible to straighten up over the next couple of days. Having a couple of days to do this means that I don't get too overwhelmed with the task at hand, since I can break it down into smaller pieces, and also means that I'm less likely to throw away or lose something important. I basically need and currently get two accommodations in order to work. The first accommodation I need is flexibility with my time, since I tend to be an insomniac, and having to be at the same place at the same time every day will mean that often my alertness and overall health is not what it should be. At my job, I do some evening and night work so I don't have to deal with my chronic allergy to mornings. Second accommodation is that I have the option of being able to work without being watched. In my current job, I work remotely from my home, and I was hired remotely. They have never seen me. I have never seen them. This is actually standard industry practice in my field. These organizations hire from all over the country and increasingly all over the world and have hundreds to thousands of employees and this is the most cost-effective way for them to hire people. And because they've never seen me, I don't have to worry about many of the problems that I've had with jobs in the past. When working on-site, I've gotten in massive trouble for what I now know were obvious autistic behaviors, including but not limited to. Having my clothes on inside out. Having clothes or shoes on with stains or rips I didn't notice until getting to work. Deodorant not working at 100% without my knowing it. Staring into space. Staring out the window. Looking as if I'm staring at somebody when I'm not. And I've just gone catatonic for a few seconds. Going to the bathroom as an escape hatch. Going back to the bathroom when I, to put it as delicately as possible, thought I got everything out when I didn't. Having an uncontrollable need to scratch myself. Having an uncontrollable need to pick at myself. 
being seized with the obsession with a facial or body hair probably nobody else can see, but it might as well be engraved in vibrating orange neon because I know it's there and I have to pluck it now or my head will explode. Going out frequently for air when it's not my break time. Low-level employees aren't allowed to do that. Nose to the grindstone, Missy. Laughing at stuff that's only in my head? Not laughing at things that other people think are funny, but I don't. Freaking out about the smells coming out of the microwave? Not doing a good job of covering up being cranky, tired, or not in the mood for talk about how bad someone is being for eating one of the donuts that was put out on the table, and so on. I got written up, threatened, gotten rid of, over and over and over again for this. But as long as they don't install an Andy cam on my work computer, shh, don't give them any bright ideas. I don't have to worry about that on this job. Tremendous relief. And as of this moment, I have not disclosed my Asperger's to them. These have so far been the only accommodations I have needed and have not felt the need to ask for any others. What working at home allows me to do is have more control over my environment. Not perfect control. I do live in a city. I do hear my neighbors, even when I work in the middle of the night. And I've lived in many, 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 many different places. And a lot of them were places where I could not get any work done to save my life. Blaring stereos, blasting TVs all hours of the day and night, screaming, slamming doors, you name it. I've tried to make situations work for myself out of sheer desperation, and I'm very happy I don't have to do that anymore. But here, I can eat good food when I'm hungry. I don't have to settle for sub-industrial grade slop when they decide it's time for me to eat. I can lie down and have a nap or vegetate or listen to the cat purr if I need to. I think even if you can't afford your autistic employees a telecommuting situation, you can at least provide them an escape hatch, a quiet room where they can get away from the constant sensory input for a few minutes at a time and maybe stim for a bit, where no one has to see or hear them. Sometimes I feel like singing. I can do that if I'm in my own space. People are very funny about you singing in the office. I don't know why. Seriously, though, it's mostly about being able to just concentrate on the tasks at hand without having to have so much of my brain occupied by external sensory and social inputs. It's a lot of work for me. It takes a lot of mental energy to try to figure out what's going on around me and to screen out things that don't mean very much. I had this one job where the woman over the wall for me laughed like a chicken all day long. I could not deal with it. Even though I knew intellectually she couldn't do much about it, and I was probably a jerk for resenting her laughter. I can hear someone sneeze and I'll be thinking about how they learned to sneeze that way, if they're sick, if I should be taking extra vitamin C, whether it will hurt my stomach to take vitamin C, why am I even thinking about this, why am I even thinking about thinking about this. Before I know it, I've lost my place. I don't have to worry about whether I said the wrong thing or failed to say the right thing, which happens for pretty much every social exchange I've ever had in the history of forever. I get to jump past that entire mud puddle and avoid it completely. I think it would be a great thing if everyone had a chance to do that, at least sometimes. Don't you?